before you it's about music. Cool. It's awful. Got it. <laughs> a different phone clip it's like that. Tricky, yeah. Did you get the food from here? Cool. It's on a phone clip for me. Are you rolling? Yeah. Oh man, I can't believe I've never admitted this in an interview ever. I'm writing really bad songs in my bedroom. I was like 13. I'm playing guitar, playing electric guitar and sitting in my what was your first song that you remember? Oh, I don't remember the specific songs. I just remember these god awful, like, you know, preteen breakup angst type of songs. I didn't detour into the like, traditional songwriting kind of thing for too long. I kind of dabbled in that for a little while and then got involved in, you know, playing drums or whatever and took some piano lessons and then got involved in DJing and record collecting led into, you know, hip hop and so on and so forth. So I guess technically it was piano. And then I, I wouldn't say I learned how to play, but you know, I took lessons or whatever. Led Zeppelin's probably been the closest thing I've had to a lifelong obsession. I, don't, I mean, you know, if you're a, a 11 or 12 or 13 and, and you think all the songs are about wizards and witchcraft and this kind of weirdness, it's like, yeah, nothing's better for, a, you know, adolescent boy. I heard uh, a, just an old-fashioned love song by Three Dog Night on the radio. And the way that it was recorded, it sounded like the radio was up kind of loud, and I just remember that it sounded... I couldn't believe that it was recorded in, you know, like 1972 or 3 or 1, or whenever it was. I don't know when it was recorded, but it was an old record that sounded like it had the production aesthetic of, I don't know, it was like a little bit classic rock, and but the, the drums and all the low end sounded like something that would come from like a James Brown record. I saw Tears for Fears with my mom in the 80s at a place called Vets Memorial in Columbus, Ohio. And uh, we were way up in the balcony, but I just remember being totally wowed by the whole thing, you know, the, the lights and the sound and everything. And I, I remember asking my mom what that, what that funny smell was. I don't have a galvanizing moment where I said, hey, I, oh, this is what I'm gonna do with my life, kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, in fact, when I was, I had been DJing and making a fair amount of money and doing it for a while and I ended up quitting my day job and I thought okay this is gonna be you know what I was gonna do professionally and I was just barely scraping by and I did that for a couple years and it sucked and I ended up getting a job at a bank and so I had already kind of I don't want to use the term throw them in the towel but you know I was I was already on the the the, the fast track to the safe bet right you know and then I, I was working with this group called the Megahertz. It was a rap group out of Columbus, and a couple of things took off. You know, got a couple, you know, decent-sized checks for some production gigs and stuff. And that was the first time that I was like, okay, this will allow me another six months to just have a go at it. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm just gonna give it one one last shot. You know, a sexy record would be Bjork's Vesp Vespertine, and. I don't know if I... Why? I don't want to get into that. Personal. At this point, it's beyond important. It's just an obsession. I can't turn it off. You know, I, 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 I'm now at the point where if I, I can listen to music just in my head. <laughs> and, uh, that's not necessarily a good thing, but I can always just, you know, change the station, put something else on or whatever. But I can't escape it. I can't go. Whether it's it just you know listening through a song that I know in my head or actually putting on music, I can't go 24 hours without music occupying my brain.